There we go. And so we are we are running. Um, did everyone get a chance to peruse the rules and look over them prior to today's meeting? I just got I had gotten an email last week from Amanda, and she told me that everything had gone through, and so um, we get to vote on them today a little bit later on, so that we can move them on to the next step of gel car. Um, and an update from me, we did um, an online, oh, here's Katie, excuse me for just one moment. Okay. We did an online reach out to homeschooled high schoolers saying, hey, here's what you can do. Contact your high schools if you think you might be rematriculating at some point. Um, and we went over a lot of the recommendations from last month that came from Mike and from everyone. So thank you for those. And um, Michelle put together a PowerPoint and it's up on the Granite State Home Educators website as well as the recording of the talk that we gave. And so I'm, I'm excited to hear um, what everyone else was able to reach out and get back from their communities about homeschooled high schoolers. And I, I'm looking forward to that feedback. Um, that's really all from me. Uh, so I guess we'll just go through member reports and I'm gonna go by who I see on my screen. So Jen, do you have anything from- Do we have to vote to approve the oh, minutes? Sorry. Do we need to vote oh, to goodness. approve September's minutes? Thank you, Steph. Yes, we do. I thought they were fine. The, <laughs> aside from the one um, addendum, yes. Right. Um, yes, so I'm sorry. May I have a motion to approve September's minutes with the changes of Jen's last name? Um, I'll approval. make that motion that we approve the minutes with the change in Jen Pereira's name spelling. Yep. Thank you. I second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. I have a, a suggestion for next month's minutes. Uh, Brad, if you could, instead of putting just people's initials, uh, you know, put the name. Yes. Uh, okay. Hold on, George. I see. So first names, write out the first names. Yeah, first name or last name or something anyway, in, rather than just initials. Because we actually have two people with the initials KM. So that would create confusion. Okay. Yeah, okay. and okay. CB made me think Cara Barlow at first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. I can do that. Okay. Thanks for the suggestion. Thank you, Fred, for doing that. No problem. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steph, for reminding me of that. I appreciate that. So, um, Jen, do you have anything from Catholics United? Yeah, there's a couple things. One is our membership continues to increase. Um, and another thing is one of the members did reach out to us regarding uh, going back into uh, specifically high school from homeschooling. And she pointed out that her district, Pembroke, is updating their homeschool policy. That was two days ago. And I went out and I looked at the site after the meeting. And yeah. if, you, if you look at the part that's agenda with um, this policy on it, there's a part all in red. It's a great policy. It's based off of the yeah. uh, New Hampshire School Boards Association. And the part in red that's on it um, they developed a policy for how to accept credits from homeschoolers. It's very interesting. If you come in from an accredited school, and they give an example of VLACs, they, you just go and they'll take those credits right in. Uh, if you don't come from a place that's accredited or has a transcript, they set up a committee, and then they try to verify looking at um, like the syllabus and tests or assessments and other things. If mm -hmm. you meet their competencies and their prerequisites. So it's a really interesting policy to look at and maybe that could be used as a sample suggestion to people. I, um, April had reached out to me as well. Unfortunately, I had gone into my spam, but I did finally get back to her. And um, I agree, it really does look like a really nice policy as far as homeschooling goes. What I'll do after this meeting is I'll copy it. It's from the Pembroke school district, I believe. Is that what you had said, Pembroke? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, yeah, their IHBG is really, it's consistent with the 2012 changes in law. So it was, 
it's nice to see. And I did like how they had either competency based or like you had said, a committee based way for students to get back into school. So that's, it is a really good example policy. She talked to me also about a month ago, um, but the policy, I guess was just in its early state, but I liked it very much. It was pretty much lifted from the law and the rules. Mm -hmm. But at that point, there was nothing about high school credit. So I'm very curious to see. And I think if it's good, maybe we can push the department to make that a model for other districts. I think Jen just linked it in the chat. Crazy link, I hope that works, but that's the link. You scroll uh, all the way to the bottom. Jen. The bottom of the, bottom of the Pembroke website. Uh, the, okay. when, no, when you go to the Pembroke uh, School Board and you click on November 17th meeting, once you bring that up, the agenda and the policy, then you scroll all the way to the bottom of the agenda and the policy and you'll see this writing in red. And that's what I'm referring to by high school credits. Thank you. Jen, what was the other, was there another district uh, that one of, one of our members uh, emailed us and I sent her a response? Was that, was this, that was this one. It was Pembroke. It was Pembroke. Yeah. Ah, for some reason, I didn't. Re you know what? I must have not seen that section in red either because I, I don't remember a um, uh, anything about competencies. To no, it, wa it wasn't in the email to us, so they must have put it in in the last day. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because it was with her was a good three plus weeks ago. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I found it to be. Uh, even without that section on a high school um, to be a, a very good policy. It really, it gave more information than they were required to give. And the information they gave was all correct and very useful. Um, I'm sorry, Jed, I'm not able, I'm on their, the website and I'm looking at the the meeting, I wasn't able to click on your link and maybe that's just because I haven't. Yeah, I wasn't either. Okay. Um, I'll keep, I'll keep working on it though. The, the link that I clicked on or that I found from SAU 53. Um, yeah, I can't go through on that link either. Michelle. Yeah. So, um, well, I'll, I'll work on that later, but that's great to know. I'd be interested, Jen, do you know how, that section in red came to be or who added it was it april herself or i don't know it was just a couple days ago and i happened to look at it after the meeting and i found it yeah i would be really interested i might reach out to april um i think i'm gonna leave myself a note and ask because i'd be really interested to know how that particular part of the policy got in there because it's very apropos yeah it's great <laughs> um did thank you have you. any did you have anything else, Jen? Because I have some stuff also. Oh. That was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I uh, went online and looked up the uh, IHBGs. Well, in Manchester, it's not called IHBG. Um, and they're actually in the process of uh, changing it. There are a couple of little problems with their current one. But as I said, they're in the process of changing it. Uh, I also uh, went to the Bedford website and uh, theirs is in compliance with the current law and rules. Uh, it didn't, it doesn't provide for high school, uh, in fact, it says homeschool students aren't eligible, homeschool and uh, non-public school students aren't eligible for uh, a diploma. And it, some districts mention that if you want a diploma, you need to attend uh, at least the senior year or sometimes the junior and senior year. But Bedford doesn't doesn't speak about that at all and they make no provision for accepting um, 
you know, for creating credits from homeschool uh, programs. But, okay. and then Hopkinton was the district. I hadn't given the name of the district at the last meeting. Uh, there had been some difficulties for one of the families, but I think it was related to the fact that they're, they started to homeschool as a result of the COVID stuff and the problems more or less had, it, it seemed to me that the problems were the school district was trying to make sure that, uh, you know, they're kept in touch because they figured these people will come back. Other people that I talked to uh, in Hopkinton said that the district has been, people who've been homeschooling um, have said the district was, that was very good about stuff. Their IHBG is incredibly brief. It just says that parents uh, who want to homeschool have to abide by the laws and rules uh, of the state. And they really don't go into anything at all besides that, um, except to say that transportation uh, is not provided, which is kind of obvious. But it's it's uh, very very brief, <laughs> so you wonder, you know, what's what happens when someone uh, notifies. But the people I talked to um, who had been homeschooling previously all thought that things that were going pretty good. So that's my uh, report on what I did. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've definitely heard many districts are still putting dates on their letters of acknowledgement. Um, and so that's something that is still happening and each family can choose to respond to as they wish, but, um, it's, you know, they're, the school boards are, or the school boards, excuse me, the school districts are not supposed to be putting dates on those letters. And, um, I think it's just going to be one of those things that has to be dealt with almost on a case by case basis, just constantly reinforcing, please stop putting dates on these letters. And so if we can just keep telling our families, if, you know, inquiring, are you, do you have a date on your letter? If so, please send in a letter to them or give them a call and let them know they should not be putting dates on these letters. In our district, um, right about that. Want me to talk about that now? Sure, and, yeah, absolutely. Maybe you don't want to say specifically dates, but specifying that the letter is for a particular school year. Yes. Because really the way the law reads now and the examples that I gave to the Governor of Wentworth District were, it should say something like, you know, acknowledging your home education program commencing on blah, blah, blah date. Mm -hmm. And then that's all it says. So there is a date per se. That's true. You're um, absolutely right. One of our representatives checked her letter and realized that her letter from a couple of years ago said something like for the 2018 to 2019 school year. So she contacted the district and wasn't overly forceful. And the district said, oh, I see. Well, that's okay. We understand that it's really for subsequent years. So then she was talking to me. I pulled out one of my much older letters mm -hmm. uh, from a year when I decided to get something through the district when the law just changed and we weren't sure how would that affect things. Because usually I use Tri-City. Um, my old letter said something like commencing in blah, 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 2013. So at one point they had a correct template and they started using the wrong template. Okay. Um, this woman was totally confused by it. So I called our district office and talked to the super assistant superintendent in charge of those things. And she understood. She looked up the old template. She realized, oh, yes, I see. Well, and I said, please send them new letters. But I also said, please don't rush because with COVID and everything else you're doing, it's not a crisis. But I did explain to her right then, also I had emailed her, that this wasn't just for the district, this was for your applying to college or other things, your you know, uh, discounts at bookstores, whatever. She seemed to understand. About two weeks later, 
the board member got a new letter. All it was was what I would call a cover letter, a letter from the district saying, yes, you received a letter in the past that gave you a specific school year, but we want you to understand that the law says that you only need to notify one time now, and your letter is actually good for blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, that doesn't work. I contacted her. She was still confused. So I said, this is the kind of thing the commissioner would love. So I sent the commissioner an email and he wrote back and said, I'll call them, you know, in the morning. And then that next day I heard, oh, she got a correct letter. So, um, but it, it took, you know, a call from the commissioner to fix the situation. Mm -hmm. So I, that's our long story. <laughs> was sort I of that. Yeah, I found that to be the case a few times myself. Right. So, I mean, a lot of times I, I really had to explain to our whole board, it's not just that if the school district says, this is fine, that it's fine. Uh, it's funny after that conversation, then another one of our board members said, oh, that's so funny because it turned out my son was registering for a class and we needed a copy of the letter. And if the letter of acknowledgement had said, you know, the 2014 to 15 school year, he wouldn't have been able to apply. So they're important. They are, it's true. May I come in with a question? Absolutely. Uh, Steph, when you contact a school district, do you say that you are from the Department of Education? I have many, many years of being before I was on the HEAC, just saying, calling from the New Hampshire Homeschooling Coalition. Okay. So what I did this time, but she knows me. There's more background to this story, which I actually told the commissioner also. I'll tell you later in a second, but um, I said that uh, I'm an area homeschooler. I'm on the New Hampshire Homeschooling Coalition, and I'm currently the coalition's representative to the Home Education Advisory Council at the Department of Education. But in my little town, I just say I'm Stephanie Marsh. And okay, everything. okay. <laughs> because I've no, been I, I just, and okay. running the homeschooling here for 27 years, so. Okay, yeah. I just, you know, I asked because I wasn't sure how to arm myself when, um, when I need to go into action. So I wasn't sure how you do it. Well, we've always had, particularly back in the days before the internet, when school districts could look up the law and whatever you were saying, it made a difference if you called and said, you know, I'm calling for the New Hampshire Homeschooling Coalition. We have a question that a parent has, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, I tried to be really nice about this at first when I told her not to rush on the letters. Um, what I told the commissioner though, was this particular su assistant superintendent does not get the law. This is the person who, when the uh, compulsory education age went up to 18, she went and contacted all the families with children who were 16 and 17 and had not sent in um, evaluations and portfolio reviews and all for those previous two years. One of my kids fell in that category. In other words, in the early years when your child was 16, then they, they were gone. The state didn't care about them anymore. They were, you know, dropped out. Um, she was trying to, you know, make the law apply retroactively. And I said, you can't do that. And it was a big argument. Um, she doesn't, yeah, doesn't get it. Okay. okay. Yep. So. Thank you. Be tough. <laughs> but nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice and tough. Do you have anything else from the coalition stuff? Um, to... Yes, actually, the, the other very quick thing, though, I did want to tell you all the story about how the commissioner got involved. Um, right after the technical advisory went out, mm -hmm. and I remember looking at it and thinking, gee, do we need to specify anything about the ages in here? But it was not on the technical advisory. We were contacted by somebody whose child had been in kindergarten and then because of COVID and concerns, she just decided to pull her out. Right. And the child was not going to be six until later in the school year. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, if you pull her out, you're gonna to have to notify for home education. And we said, no, that's not true. Um, that was Conval actually. Um, and then they called and got it straightened out. Okay. Yeah. Relatively minor. And then the usual, lots of people homeschooling, lots of questions. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, before we before we go any further, can I ask um, 
uh, anyone to remind me what IHBG stands for? Okay. I uh, I can jump in on that because Great. when I was looking up the various policies, what I found out was that uh, these letter designations, they're a result of the, uh, I think it's the National School Boards Association or something like that. And they have, my goodness, many, 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 I, it, it, they all start with I because it has to do with instruction. But I saw like at least 25 of these different uh, letter combinations that were specific to certain areas of instruction. So it doesn't stand for anything in particular. I think Mike, you, I think you had pointed that out at the last meeting that it's, you can't assign a meaning to the letters IHBG, but uh, they're just particular to certain areas of instruction. Okay, okay. I, okay, I have it in the minutes from last, uh, from our last meeting that it simply means a, a school's homeschool policy, but I, I thought maybe I could do better, but. No, you did fine. Yeah, it's not really an acronym. Yeah. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Sure thing, thank you. Um, let's see, next. So Katie um, just put into the chat her contribution. She said she's in kind of bad reception. Mm -hmm. um, but that she said the potential news of note is that more district with more districts going remote, families are making the decision to home. More families are making the decision to homeschool. She's being contacted to help new families. Thankfully, she has secured a location for some sports and are able to invite Seacoast families to join us for sports each week. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, so that's from Shia. And let's see, next across my screen, I have um, Senator Ward. <laughs> I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday, come on. <laughs> well, that is outside the purview of this meeting. <laughs> this is true. Absolutely true. <laughs> no, obviously nothing is going on right now. We are at some point I expect to be the uh, well to have the, the designation for which commission and committees I'll be on. And I right now I haven't gotten that. So hopefully I can stay on here, but who knows? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thank you for being here for now. <laughs> Senator, do you have any information about uh, the Hillsdale Charter School meeting? Yes, we met and we talked about the possibilities and obviously they have uh, several charter schools, the Barney schools. And, uh, but we decided that until we have a get that money release that we got from the federal government and have some policy about what we can do with it, it was not much reason for us to sit and discuss things what we, before we knew what we were dealing with. But it was, a, it was a good meeting and people are very excited about the charter schools and having more of them. The thing is we have to release that money. Thank you. Ah, oh, Fred. Yes. That reminds me of something. Uh, in the minutes, I had meant to mention this. It should say, uh, upcoming meeting with Hillsdale College representatives. It just says Hillsdale representatives. Oh, okay. I had meant, I had thought that would cover for college. Do you, you don't think that sufficiently represents Hillsdale College? Well, not everybody knows that Hillsdale is even a college. I see. I see. It's a no minor problem. point, but okay. useful. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator, if you need to rally the homeschoolers to come talk, come give speeches to help release that money, you let us know. Absolutely, <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, Fred, I have you next across the top of my screen. Uh, I, I, don't have, I don't have anything to share on the homeschool front. We at Thomas More are winding up our in-person sessions and 
uh, are getting ready to go online, but uh, nothing to report from the homeschool for the homeschool sector. Okay. How's it going otherwise? <laughs> really well, really well. Yes, yeah, so it's getting, it's, it's going to be sad um, having to do online schooling after what we just did. We, we had a great few months. Yeah. So. Looking forward to January then. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hopefully everything's okay. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mike, how's life in Winds in Wyndham? <laughs> uh, it's typical chaos. <laughs> um, just par for the course these days. Um, we're in, you know, the midst of a big debate about whether we should or should not go remote. Um, and the, the issue seems to be much more about the adults than the children. We have, you know, very few cases, but if a student comes in positive, then we lose three or four teachers for two weeks because they have to quarantine and then we don't have any substitutes. Right. So mm -hmm. there's uh, big chunks of time where students aren't receiving any instruction other than being given an assignment. Uh, and then, um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. <clears throat> uh, as more and more districts go remote, more and more teachers have children home and we'll have to make decisions about uh, taking care of their own kids because daycares are limited. And, um, there's only so many families with grandparents nearby to do child care. And um, yeah. so there, uh, it, there's a ripple effect that we're just waiting to see how that plays out. Um, but other than that, it's uh, just plugging along. It's really a day by day <laughs> situation. I hear that from around the state and the country. Yes, I yeah. really do. It's yeah, it's a day by day situation. It's it's right. like constantly coming in with your hair on fire and figuring out which one to put in for out first. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> not a bad analogy. Yeah, well, I talked to a couple of students and they said it's it's like going to bed every night waiting to see if there'll be a snow day. Yeah, <laughs> not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah, get a call true. in the morning yeah. with no weather to speak of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that's, that's kept the, those are, that's been what the school boards um, are involved with right now. They're yeah. hardly dealing with policy or any other of those issues, just budgets and, um, and then trying to make decisions about COVID related yeah. pieces. All right. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> um, let's see, who do I, oh, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Do you have anything to report? Actually, uh, no, it's actually been pretty quiet the last few weeks. Um, we had a, a number of them, a number of uh, additional homeschool families seeking the commissioner's support this year. Um, and I think it's due to COVID, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but aside from that, it's been, it's been pretty quiet. Wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Just the usual questions. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yep. And have you had any, have you noticed any uptick or any questions coming from parents saying, you know, I'm just doing this for this year. Do you have any advice on what I can do to make sure I can seamlessly enter back into schools next year? Or has that not really come across? There a couple of them, but not, not a whole lot of them. Okay. What, what's the general thing that you have been telling people? What's your advice? Well, I've indicated as this, the law states that you do not have to do the same subjects, et cetera. But I did have let them know that if they're going to return to school, it will be up to the school in consultation with the parents looking over the portfolios, et cetera, to determine grade placement. Because when we talked about credits earlier, um, there are minimum credits, but each district can actually um, come up with their own um, number of credits, subjects, etc. So there's no um, seamless approach from school to school. Okay, that makes sense. I thought about that. Thank you. 
Um, there's a question. Michelle Lavelle asked a question for you, Ellie. Any expectation with the enrollment figures as of October 1st when they will be available as far as, I guess, new homeschoolers? I can check upstairs that um, the data group actually is in control of that. So I can check with them upstairs to see when they'll put those out and I can let you know. Thanks. That would be great. Yeah, if you want to shoot me an email and then I can disperse those numbers. That would be really interesting. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, may, I, may I come in here? Sure. Okay, just for the minute. Um, which group is Mrs. Riel representing? Department of Education. Okay, okay. Um, so I see in the minutes for today, I see Department of Higher Ed. Uh, I see. Thank you. I have it. Yeah. I have it. I'm, I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think, is that, I think that's everybody. Um, and so I don't, I don't know that the commissioner will be joining us. I did not hear from him or from Angela. I imagine he might be busy, but. Um, I don't think he's, I know, I haven't seen him in the building today, so I'm not yeah. sure he's out and about. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and the. I don't know if the rules would be considered old business or new business since we passed them along and now we're bringing them back, but um, we can open up a discussion on the rules. They came back to us completely unchanged from the way we sent them out. So um, we, I'm happy to open up discussion on them if anyone has any opinions or addendums. Otherwise we can vote to send them along to the next step. Well. I'm still, I remain convinced that the version uh, that was sent to the state board is going to result in confusion uh, among homeschoolers and even among districts. And Kitty, as we were speaking uh, a few days ago, you were, you were apparently told, well, that's what the internet is for uh, when there's problems uh, advise your people what to do. And, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not sure that's a real good approach. I really think that the set of rules that we had recommended took a more comprehensive approach. And we made sure that we didn't have anything in those rules that went beyond the law. So I'm not going to belabor this, but I really think I think that homeschoolers need to know that this set of rules is not what we recommended. So I, my suggestion would be that we, uh, rec that we um, vote on, that we uh, send them, let the state board know that we, uh, uh, approve these with reservations. I don't want to go beyond that. I don't want to, but I think that people need to know that when problems come up trying to interpret these things, people need to know that this is not what we had recommended. And I realize we're only advisory. I got that, but, uh, I really think that there needs to be the knowledge among homeschoolers and districts that um, this set of rules is not what we worked hard to, uh, to amend. That's it. That's my two cents worth. Well, it's, it's noted in the minutes and it's been recorded. So it's definitely out there now for future homeschoolers and for school boards. Thank you, George. Does anyone else have any comments that they would like to add for the rules? I have a question. Go ahead. Sorry, Fred, go ahead. No, 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 no. When do you expect this to go before Jelcar? Um, uh, December 17th. Oh, okay. That's the next meeting. Okay. Yep. 
Um, two things, working from the back frontwards. Um, there's a mistake in this final proposal that was also in the initial proposal that we voted on. And that is in the very last section, certificate of completion. Um, at the very end, it references C, a document that meets all the requirements of ED 315.14. It needs to be renumbered. It needs to say 315.16. Right now it refers back to the grievance committee. I've brought this up like three or four times. Yeah, so you it have makes no sense the way it reads. We've got to fix it. So it's just referring to the actual section. That the, actual, the proper section, right. Um, Steph, could you just repeat what the correct number should be again, please? Okay, it should be 315.16, which is actually that section on certificate of completion. Okay. It's really just a typo. It's just that we've brought it up even before the initial proposal. Um, Thank you. Just kidding. Um, I, I went over it very carefully just to make sure this was the same as the previous one. Um, I, I understand George's points. I also see advantages in having less wording, especially since we don't have um, requirements for scope and sequence and uh, turning in evaluations and things like that. The only place that leaves me a little bit uncertain is on the second page uh, at the very bottom about notification requirements. We've talked about this before. These rules just basically say after the PA receives the notification, they send a letter of acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about if the letter uh, of, a, of notification is missing something. But I do think that the point here is that all the letter says is the date of birth and the address and the phone number, or maybe not the phone number. Um, and that text was from the days when you would submit a scope and sequence of which subjects you were going to do that year and how you were going to do them, or if you were going to unschool. So I, I guess I'm willing to let it go. I, that's just the only part I don't know if anybody else has concerns about it, because it doesn't provide for what if the parent sends a letter of notification and puts their child's grade level instead of their birth date? And does the parent just wait to get a letter of acknowledgement back? And then that would you know, prove that everything is fine. And if they don't get a letter, it's up to them to be aware they have not received a letter. That's probably the way most of our regulations work. You apply to an agency and they don't reply back to you that your thing is wrong. You it may or may not go through. Um, right. But districts are not always very good about sending you your letter within 14 days. So I don't know if we should be concerned about it. I'm going to let it go. Um, I do remember you bringing this up with Attorney Bond and Amanda, and I do remember them. I remember the commentary being something along the lines of, you know, that's something that when it comes up, either the district as they are sending back the letter will say it's incomplete. You know, we understand, mm -hmm. you know, you've been given, here's your letter of acknowledgement, but please send us the missing information, I think is what they expect to happen. Yeah. It's not in the rules. It's not written that that's the proper protocol to follow. But um, I do remember us bringing that up and I'm happy to, since I'm writing to Amanda anyway, I'm happy to very specifically state that in there one more time. Yeah. Steph. Well, there is a process uh, that's outlined in the, in, you know, section D right after what the parent does. Uh, it says within 14 days, the PA shall acknowledge receipt uh, along with a request for any information required by RSA that was not included in the original notice. So there is something. Right. Uh, but I, were you, uh, Steph, saying that because they're not real good at necessarily getting back within 14 days, that that would still be a problem? Is that what you were getting at? 
Well, it, it leaves all the um, weight of this on the parent if they don't know they did something wrong. I'm not sure the district would contact them. I, I don't know. The, the old rule said they had to notify by certified mail within 10 days. But I'm not sure in any other laws in the state, we have similar types of things. So, um, I mean, I'm not sure when this, I had suggested to Amanda, uh, why don't we just say that the district, if, if the notification is incomplete, the district will send a letter saying the notification is incomplete. Uh, we can't acknowledge until you complete the notification instead of this big long process that we had before that would be the end of the process the the district writing that letter and saying we can't acknowledge yet send us your info then we'll acknowledge i mean it was not worded that way i'm just explaining it that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jen I, i'm sorry sorry um steph may i come in on this and just ask i'm on page two and i'm at section 315.05 and are you raising questions on a missing section well in a way if you look at section d okay um in the original well maybe it's not the original but in the current law current rules there is actually there are actually two sections um if the notification complies, they send a letter. If any of the requirements are not met by the notification, they return by certified mail with return receipt, the notification to the parent within 10 business days of receipt. And then the parent shall have 10 days from receipt to send the amended notification to the PA. So you could look that up in the, the current law, current okay. rules online. So it's, it's just, Cutting it down, and it, it may be fine, really, because it may just be saying, well, if it's not complete, we'll figure it out. It wouldn't be missing anything like a scope and sequence or, you know, any other complicated material. Our, our letters of notification used to be, you know, three pages long or something. So I can understand it. I just wanted to point it out. It's something that we, you know, that is a little bit, a little vague. What if a parent sends a letter that's not complete? Right. And I'm glad we have it noted and recorded just in the event that we need to do something in the future. If we see, yeah, in the future, if it's a problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, we can take care of it. Are there any other commentaries or questions about the rules as they stand? You know what we're in pre-1504 that's on the first it starts on the first page it says participating agencies duties and authority mm -hmm. and it lists uh seven seven duties well some of the duties of participating agencies are not in here they're still in other places right and so this gives a misinterpreter it gives a misimpression uh, for example duties of participating agencies a is the parent shall select as a pa one of the following and i remember amanda saying to me we can't put duties of participating agencies and duties of parents in the same section well you know what it's impossible not to because there, is, there are a number of duties of participating agencies that involve the parents providing something to the PA and the PA responding in some way. So if you create separate sections, you end up duplicating wording, which is kind of silly. Uh, and then the problem is if you have a section that says, participating agencies duties and they're not all listed there well, what does that do that creates confusion that's one of the things i'm talking about mm -hmm. 
because uh, you know the part about acknowledging within 14 days gee that's a duty of a participating agency but it's not in this section it's in the notification section and like i said i'm not i'm not saying that uh, these things shouldn't be in the same section that's what amanda said but the problem is by more or less pretending that this list here shows you the duties of PAs, but there are, I think, four duties that are left out. That really doesn't help the situation. When we worked on the rules, we had set up uh, an easily understandable process. We realigned some of the sections so that things flowed better, and it would have been much more difficult to misunderstand the process. So, you know, I mean, there's other stuff I could bring out too, but I, I'm just, I, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I appreciate your concerns, George. Thank you for bringing them up. And um, we know that if, if you vote to approve these rules that you're approving them with reservations for the confusion that may be created in the future. So. I kind of hate to, um, yeah, not send these through, but actually what, what George was saying about uh, duties, when April first contacted me about that Pembroke uh, school board, um, you know, policy, which was so good, mm -hmm. they had a list of duties. And one thing I wrote back to her, and because they were very good, they lifted it basically from the law and the rules. Yes. And I said, but one thing that's not included in their policy here is that the district needs to respond within 14 days with a letter of acknowledgement. And she said, oh, oh, oh. And I didn't look to see if that had been added to their policy, but perhaps that's one reason that um, it wasn't initially because it's in a different category under notification requirements. But it certainly is a duty. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But I suppose all rules have their virtues. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, um, I can't hear you, Jen. Oh. Jen, are you? There you go. Go ahead. The microphone's not working, Jen. Your mic was going in and out earlier also. Maybe jiggle some cords. <laughs> Type it. Yeah, like that. Jen said, I just wanted to point out that some homeschoolers are saying they email their notification. Yep. That is but true. They still need a paper letter rather than an email. That's an interesting thing. The current yeah. rules are more focused on letters. And. Um, I know that emails are considered legal documents. Mm. Um, and so you can send in an email and they will print it out on their end and then they can send you a reply email and you print it out on your end, which also has the timestamp on it, et cetera. Um, it does not have a, a physical signature. It may have a digital signature on it, but um, emails are still legal documents as well. Um, I don't think we'll be tweeting them or Snapchatting them anytime soon. So I don't think... <laughs> I don't know how far we have to go with including <laughs> jargon, <laughs> but I think that's a good point that you bring up. Thank you. <laughs> Lord help me if we have to start tweeting them. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, Michelle said some SAUs are satisfied with emails and it's true because um, they, they both have the timestamps and everything. So, um, if there's if there's no further discussion, I will entertain a motion to 
send these rules forward. After I, I will speak with Amanda about changing the 315.14 to the proper section, which is 315.16. Um, and I'm going to kind of show her a small recording of our meeting and get her opinion so that you can all hear back about that. Um, but with those things noted, um, I will entertain a motion to send the rules forward. I move that we send the rules forward with reservations. That's it. I'm not gonna list a whole string of reservations. I'm just, move, you know, I move we send them forward with reservations. Um, not sure I can entertain a motion to send them forward with reservations, but you're welcome. You're welcome to have reservations, but I think I just need to have a motion to send them forward. Uh, I think we can. I mean, if if I don't get a second, it ain't going to go anywhere anyway. But I I do think we can. Senator Understood. Ward, uh, you're more familiar with this kind of thing than I am. What's your opinion? Well, I sit on the jail car and I have not seen anyone. They ask sometimes for a conditional approval and things are discussed at the jail car meeting. I think if you want to put in with reservations, you're going to have to spell out what those reservations are. Because nobody will know what they are until they start yeah. discussing them. I, I, don't, yeah, I don't really want to do that. You know, we've talked about it here. But, um, geez, I mean, I could specify, but the thing is, I don't want to, I don't want to get into a situation where uh, we're having this big argument with the department or the commissioner, because, you know, for the most part, when it comes to areas other than homeschooling, I'm perfectly fine with the way things are going with the commissioner and the department right now. And I don't want to create a stumbling block. I thought we could just say, yeah, we, we agree with this. We, we, in other words, we kind of agree with this, but we're, we're not really 100% in favor of it. But you're saying, uh, Senator, that we, <laughs> as much as that's what I'd like to do, we can't do that. We have to if we want to say we're not real happy with it, um, we have to say specifically why. Huh? That's my understanding, George. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess I'll just vote against it. <laughs> Everybody else can vote in favor of it, and I'll vote against it. <laughs> I, I, that's not really what I wanted to do, but... Okay, somebody else can make a motion. <laughs> I move to approve. Can I have a second? I second. Thank you, Katie. It's been moved and seconded to approve the rules. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And Jen votes aye on the, uh, in the chat. All opposed? Nay. George votes nay. It's been moved and seconded, and we have a majority vote to send them forward. Thank you very much, Senator. I look forward to hearing how they fare in Jelcar in December. <laughs> well, somebody, one of you is going to have to bring it up, right? Who is going to bring it up, Amanda? Or um, I am going to talk to Amanda about that, actually. Okay. So that's a a future conversation, um, but I will keep everyone posted. It's the same day that we have our, that we would have our December HEAC meeting mm -hmm. if we need one. So, okay. um, excellent. Thank you all very much. Um, and I know if there are no other, are there any other announcements? Katie, it's nice to see you. <laughs> um, Michelle, would you like to bring up the IHBG policy that you? Sure. 
be okay. happy to. Um, not that long ago, we received a copy of a proposed revision to policy IHBG written by the New Hampshire School Board Association. And uh, in my analysis, it has ex a ridiculous number of flaws with it. Uh, I did publish it this afternoon on the Granite State Home Educators website and included copies of their draft policy. So it's completely available to see as the NHSBA provided it. Um, you can look there. Let me provide the link for you right now. And put it up there. Oh, thank you. Uh, so you can see the copies of their policy for yourself and the analysis I did for it. Uh, just right off the bat, um, they make a reference in the opening paragraph even that it uh, compulsory attendance is from age six inclusive of students who are 18 years old when we know compulsory ed ends once the student and is 18. Uh, they also reference um, that home education notification is required on or before commencing their home education program. And that's not consistent with home ed rules. So there are a lot of problems throughout their draft policy. Uh, my concern is that many school boards who are members of the NHSBA will either have already received this and be going through their first and second reading as required for approval, and they can modify it or adopt it wholesale or whatever they want. They have no obligation to accept this, but this is only going to give us more problems of incorrect policies regarding home education and not really resolve the problem that the department's technical advisory pointed out in late September. That's really strange because they they um, redid their policy two or three years ago because there were problems with it. And at this point, with a new set of rules going in, why on earth would they pick right now well, I did a spot check of roughly 50 SAU policies for IHBG over the course of several months as new homeschoolers were bringing problems to our attention. And an overwhelming number, I would literally say like four dozen that I checked, um, have policies that were never updated following to 2012 law changes. And that's a big reason why the department issued that technical advisory in late mm -hmm. September. It, the pr problem was so pervasive that they had to intervene on a massive level and not just a couple random phone calls to one or two errant districts. Uh, but here we see very clearly in black and white from the New Hampshire School Board Association, uh, a draft policy that is not consistent with home ed rule laws that have been in existence now for eight years. They still are not uh, compliant and consistent with what's in law. Yeah, but their form, the policy that they have up until now was compliant. They changed it, like I said, about three years ago because we called them out on it. And they right away, it took them a couple of months because they have a process, you know. Yep. They, they had changed it and the policy that they put into effect was consistent. So I, I can't figure out why on earth they would make changes now when there's, they should know that there's a new set of rules going through. Uh, what they, why they did what they did, I can't begin to explain to you. And I can't tell you why a hunt, over a hundred different districts have a patchwork of policies that exist now, but many do not reflect the 2012 law changes. Mm -hmm. And this draft policy by the NHSBA does not really move it forward to being more resolved. It, in fact, just leaves more confusion. No, that's it. You're right. That's not going to help at all. I mean, you can see it for yourself and do with that as you wish with your members, but I would encourage you to look it over for yourself, compare it with home ed law, compulsory attendance law, truancy law, and all the other appropriate references, um, but you'll see for yourself, it's very problematic. Yeah, just from the two things that you mentioned a few minutes ago, it's very problematic. I'm having 
a hard time locating it on the um, New Hampshire School Board Association website. They uh, usually don't make them available to uh, non-members. Right. Understood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and since that seat is currently vacant um, on HEAC, is it so, so if you're not a member, are you able to attend their meetings? Well, it, it, it's the New Hampshire School Board Association is a membership driven organization. And it's my understanding that members of the public are not able to attend. Uh, but you can attend your own local school board meeting. That is a public body and taxpayers can certainly attend their local school board meetings and the policies that are given to them by the NHSBA become public documents at that point, subject to RSA 91A right to know law. So this is a public document for those districts that have already begun their first reading of the po sample policy. Okay. Um, so that would be the best way to affect change prior to this becoming an adopted policy. Would be to contact your own individual SAUs to address the concerns that you see in the sample policy from NHSBA. Unfortunately, that means it's like a hundred different <laughs> districts. It's not, um, yeah. Yeah, it's putting out a hundred different fires instead of dealing with it in as a unified issue. But it's local control. School boards have their choice as to what to do with the proposed policy from their NHSBA legal counsel. Unless we were out to ask the commissioner. That I I think it would be appropriate for the department to be aware of what's happening and they can decide what what would be appropriate if anything okay. so one thing that's always a problem like with these technical advisories they get sent but i'm not sure if they just end up in a pile of many many other emails or if they don't get sent to the correct person because in that recent discussion with governor wentworth district about the letter of acknowledgement um, you know, I said, here's the technical advisory. Oh, we never saw this. I don't think we ever got it. Well, you know, we know they got it, but who right. knows where it went. Exactly. Um, same thing with putting it in front of the right eyes is always a challenge. Yeah. Um, I think I would like, I mean, I know not everyone has gotten a chance to read this yet, but I think what I would like to do is um, I will send an email out after the meeting and everyone can look at the sample policy and maybe in, I mean, I know it's a holiday week coming up, but maybe if people who have opinions on it could get back to me, um, I, let's say by Monday and then Monday I would, I would like the, the rest of um, he asked permission, we can vote on it, um, to contact the commissioner with our concerns about this policy. And perhaps rather than putting out a hundred fires from the bottom up, we might be able to enlist his assistance to put some out from the top down. Um, One fire instead of a hundred. Exactly. Um, yeah, we does anyone have any to comments? Contact the school boards that? association, either you or the commissioner. Right, yes, yes. And I'd be happy to go to their meeting if they would have me. Um, <laughs> I can walk into the lion's den, I'll be okay. <laughs> so um, is, does anyone have any comments or things to add or more ideas? Well, I move that we give you permission to solicit information from us and pass it on to the commissioner. Does that work? I think so. Mm -hmm. So we need a second. I second. All right. Thank you, Fred. It's been moved and seconded that I solicit information about this um, IHBG sample policy coming down from the New Hampshire School Boards Association and compile it and pass it on to the commissioner. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> 
All right. Um, <laughs> Jen votes yes via text or via messenger or that chat. <laughs> Hello, kitten. All right. Um, I will make sure to do that. I will send out an email after this meeting so that you can all see what I've seen and give me your opinions. Don't hold anything back. <laughs> and we'll get that sent as soon as we can. Um, is there anything further that anyone would like to bring up? Um, Katie said, I missed this. What does IHBG or IHGB stand for? I think it's BG. It's not an actual acronym. It is, for whatever reason, the call sign for homeschool policies that school boards have. So does that answer your question? Okay, cool. <laughs> Excellent. Well, if there's nothing further, um, I would like to officially wish the Senator a very happy birthday and okay. wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn and have a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Oh, any opposed? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, very much for all your time and your continued service to the education of New Hampshire's kiddos. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.